Welcome to the Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. And I'm EJ. And today we'll be discussing uh, whether you should get feedback on your book before it's finished. Hmm. So, a uh, quick answer to that question. Yes, you should get feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, anyone would tell you not to get feedback. Uh hmm. There might be some random situation that uh, you and I are not familiar with (laughs) where you might not want to get feedback, but uh, in general, you definitely will. Uh, So the real question is, uh, you know, where to get the feedback, what to ask Mm. uh, when you're trying to get feedback. And, you know, just in general, uh, what kinds of uh, what times you can go and get feedback at. And I mean, look. Nobody's going to force you to get feedback before you publish, but in that case, the um, the audience will end up giving you feedback. The people who actually paid for your work, and uh, trust me, because they paid, they're not going to go easy on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like what we were discussing in our uh, last uh, podcast there. Uh, when you mm-hmm. get reviews, uh, they definitely will point out any flaws that they feel were a part of the book there. So if you can get them before publication, certainly that is the best time to get them. Mm, Definitely. There are a couple different times, obviously, that you can get it there. Uh, You know, they go by alpha, beta, gamma, sort (laughs) of distinguishing (laughs) there. So there's the alpha, Mm. of course, when you're really just in an outline phase, uh, you can get Mm. it down there or the general one is also beta, so it's uh, beta reading or beta readers just before mm-hmm. essentially you're going to uh, get it uh, looked at by an editor and just before publication sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you have a little bit of experience with uh, both of those there now, don't you, Ethan? Uh, yeah, I, I'm i playing around with the ideas of it now, but... Uh... I mean, initially, I think beta reading is the one that, that most people know about. This is a, you know, a very common thing in the, in the writing and the world of aspiring writers. I think almost everyone knows about beta reading. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think both you and, and I did that for our first books, right? We kind of had a small group of people that we gave the manuscripts to and just had them kind of review it before actual publication yeah on on my end uh, very small because (laughs) I I didn't know very many people at the time to be able to look it over Uh, but definitely now uh, there are a few different places that uh, we can go to Uh, but Mm. alpha reading in particular is uh, quite a bit different like beta you know you would actually have more of the actual writing done so you would have all the yeah. chapters and kind of maybe looked it over uh, yourself mm-hmm. beforehand and have something there uh, with mm-hmm. the alpha side of things and being more of an outline it's uh, quite a different experience mm-hmm. I imagine uh, so you're more familiar with <laughs> yeah. that yeah definitely um, look okay the alpha experience is something that I only recently even considered doing mm-hmm. I, I was way too how shall I put it, too timid with my very first manuscript to, to do that because I still had no idea how this whole writing thing was going to pan out and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> with the second manuscript, I feel a bit. So I did explain to you at some point. Um, I think the beta reading phase is more about, as you said, the writing. It's already done your first draft. Maybe you even revised it a bit. So the people who read it are pretty much almost reading it to, to catch bugs you can almost say, Mm -hmm. whereas in alpha, uh, what my thought process with the alpha phase was is, you know, why should I engage these people to read a 200,000 word manuscript? Uh, You know, I'm I'm asking for a lot of time, a lot of effort on their part, and while they may be more than willing to do it, and I'm so grateful for that, uh, it also comes back down to me when I get the feedback. Now I get, you know, 200 comments that I need to go look at and tweak and change, and that's fine, but 
working with this huge manuscript and changing one little thing and evaluating how it ripples through that entire manuscript. It's just, it's a bit of a nightmare. It's really difficult to do. So I had the idea, why not get some feedback from some people at the point where I'm still just outlining the story. I'm still just kind of making it up as I go along. I'm structuring it. I'm working it out. Um, so instead of someone telling me all the way down later in the process, you know, this whole character is, is useless because, you know, for this and this reason, now I have to go rip that character out of a whole <laughs> manuscript. <laughs> instead of working with a 200,000 word manuscript, now I'm working with a 20,000 word outline. And it's so much easier to go shift things around and change things up based on the feedback I get. It's just, it's a lot easier. Yeah, I can definitely imagine uh, just even with the beta side of things, if you have to change a whole chapter around, mm. it's going to be a lot harder than just yeah. changing around a bullet point. <laughs> exactly. And you know exactly this because you did that. You changed a lot of your chapters around in, in one of your Blackbeard books, I remember you mentioning. And I mean, that's a lot of work. Yeah, I, I mentioned in the in the last uh, podcast there, I, I guess I didn't really mention too much of the uh, headache that kind of surrounded uh, <laughs> doing that. Um, mm. cause when I, when I was switching it around there a little bit, some characters, mm. um, were introduced just a tiny bit later mm. and, uh, that ended up like, uh, I even put it out in publication and, uh, there was still like one or two moments where they mentioned something from the previous one version yeah. la later on that I just missed somehow. And yeah, so exactly. it, it would have been rather confusing for people to read. Luckily, it, it, uh, it's not too big of an issue. But uh, mm. yeah, that could have been uh, fixed a lot easier had I you know, had it uh, fixed in that alpha stage <laughs> rather than yeah. uh, after publication and everything. Mm. Um, one thing, though, with the alpha side of things that uh, at least maybe uh, you can give me your opinion on this, but I think that mm -hmm. the alpha side of things might only be best to do when it's involved with people who ha already are familiar with the first one because mm. if you were say getting people who know nothing about it like getting that outline it might mm. not really resonate as well how do you feel about that I th yeah i think that's a that's a perfectly valid point you're making um and that might be part of the reason i didn't even consider this for the first book because mm. You know, the first time around, you really need people to bond with your protagonist, and a lot of the story success hinges on that. So, I think if, if you're working with a, a, the very first book in a series, the alpha stage reviews might not really help you that much. Um, it's only once people have gotten to know the characters and it, they have at least a sense for your world, you know, what kind of world are you building, mm -hmm. what are, you know, what's the general tone of your prose in the first book. So, yeah, I would, I would be wary of using this method on the first book in a series, <laughs> or a standalone book, obviously, same thing. Yeah, definitely, uh, it, it'd be good still, of course, to uh, maybe get feedback on the outline, like, hey, I thought about this for an idea for a story, what do you think about that? But yeah. getting an actual outline, like point by point of the chapters and everything, uh, mm -hmm. if there's not really, uh, if the people who are reading that, uh, outline aren't really attached to those characters, it might, uh, it might be harder for them to give feedback mm -hmm. than it would be in an actual beta reading where they have, uh, the whole chapters to look at. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about, of course, uh, before you guys mm -hmm. go out and get any feedback. Um, <laughs> and then of course... The next question is uh, where to get feedback, and uh, you know, of course, there's pros and cons with each. So uh, the first would obviously be friends and family, and uh, mm -hmm. those probably bring a few more cons than <laughs> pros. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look, I, th I think the only pro is that these people will tend to be more willing to spend their time on yeah. helping you. That's probably the only pro. <laughs> Unless you're related to Stephen King, of course. I mean, then there's a lot more pros, but I doubt many people can say that. Yeah. 
<laughs> or related to an editor or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, in general, uh, I found definitely like uh, my dad, he's read all the books before, but uh, mm -hmm. in general, trying to get him to look critically and like getting uh, feedback that I would really need is is rather difficult. Like he does read a lot, but um, I, I just don't think he's like, has that critical eye. So he's mm -hmm. not able to kind of look at that or like not, like even if he says, even like if he say gets a moment where uh, it feels weird or something like that, like he might just kind of push past it and forget about it after a time. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that he would uh, write down or look at. Um, mm -hmm. He'd have he definitely has given me some good feedback, but probably not as much as I could have gotten from somebody else. So yeah, you, could, you could say like there will be shiny moments, but uh, on, on average, I think because I think another problem with uh, you know family and maybe friends that are very dear to you is you kind of want to give them leeway, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt. You don't want to hurt them, you don't want to damage the relationship. It's a lot of things that play into that relationship that maybe should make one suspicious of what kind of feedback you'll typically get from friends and family. Yeah. They won't. Which is, you know, not their fault. It's just how we are as humans. <laughs> <laughs> they won't necessarily uh, want to uh, be as critical as yeah. you want them to be. And, and it doesn't help, trust me, it doesn't help to tell them, please be as critical as you can. That's not going to make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's human nature. So well, yeah, and it almost—it's uh, almost even coming up here uh, with uh, you and I. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably no secret that uh, I'm one of Ethan's uh, alpha readers there for his his uh, new yes. ones. But uh, because <laughs> of our you know recent friendship here, it, it's almost been kind of hard. I don't want to don't want to uh, poke poke your uh, uh, push your buttons as it were uh, too <laughs> okay. much there. I don't want to sour that relationship, but I know that uh, mm. I know that's just my anxiety. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's... Tough love in the end is much better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just bite the bullet. It's my problem in this situation, not yours. So <laughs> mm -hmm. you definitely. You've been handling it admirably. <laughs> I, I don't think you've been going too easy on me on this story. <laughs> so no, that's good. <laughs> and of course, uh, beyond the family and friends there, uh, there are definitely other ways that you can get feedback. Uh, we've mentioned in the past there, uh, Goodreads. Uh, Goodreads has lots of uh, different, uh, what you would call forums, I guess, uh, in most cases. Mm -hmm. So there's different groups that people make, and uh, there's definitely beta reading groups that you can go to. Um, mm. Unfortunately, I don't have much experience with that, but I'm sure that it's like any other uh, beta reading group there and it all depends on uh, really who is in the group itself uh, that'll depend mm -hmm. on what kind of advice you'll end up getting yeah um, it, I mean, places like goodreads groups and even keyboards for people who like to use that they'll all mm -hmm. lead you to the same place and that's what we call writers groups or crit circles mm -hmm. um, and yeah I think that's that's something you can you can definitely take a look at to to use. There's um, definitely some pros and cons when it comes to writers yeah, groups too, though. Definitely, and we'll be taking a look at those in a bit. <laughs> uh, one other one, uh, which uh, kind of almost the same way, it leads I think back all to writers giving feedback. Uh, it's called Write On. Uh, Amazon mm -hmm. uh, owns it there. And uh, it's pretty much just a site, again, where you can put up your manuscript and people can look at it. Uh, you can kind of set up who is allowed to look at it, that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, they can look at it, give you feedback on each chapter and everything like that. And uh, it's a great way to kind of get involved. Um, but it, it kind of does lead into the pros and cons a little bit there. Uh, I've had experience mm -hmm. with write on specifically. Um, okay. I put up uh, my two Bartholomew Roberts uh, novellas, and I did get a little bit of feedback there uh, from a couple uh, generous people. 
uh, but not overly much. And I think the main con that I would say for any writer group or Goodreads group or write on say would be that you really it's it's almost a social site you kind of need to be active yourself if you want to get feedback mm -hmm. like people are more willing to do an exchange rather than just you know freely give their feedback sure. on it so it's uh definitely something that's uh it's a time investment for sure mm -hmm. um have you had any experience with uh, writers groups or anything like that um, I, I've i tried multiple times. I joined critters.org at some point and I fully intended to you know, work in those groups and contribute and you know in the end I never really just found the time that I needed. Uh, critters for instance, I'm, I'm sure it's a very helpful group to those that use it and I, I, I don't know enough to you know <laughs> give a full review but just right out of the gate, because the, the manuscripts needed to be in a very specific format, I realized that I'm, you know, I'm going to be spending quite a while just formatting the manuscript to be correct to be used on their site. And that, that already sh you know, pointed me to how much of a time investment it's going to be. And then, of course, because a huge novel, it, it does take a lot of time. And, of course, you have to return all that effort that people do for you uh, so in the end, I, I must admit, I don't have a lot of experience with it because I, I just never found the time, <laughs> which sounds like a lame excuse now that I say it, but, you know. <laughs> well, that is very I, odd there, uh, that they would have to have a specific format for the manuscript. Yeah, like yeah they had a very specific like text format because I think they had so many submissions that they don't go through them one by one. They, they have a, a, a program that does it, and because that program is very finicky and very specific, they kind of needed it, you know, literally to the nearest space and to the nearest new line that you make in the header of your manuscript had to be exactly the way they, they need it. So it's, That's kind of put me off of it. <laughs> so it's not so much like a, a forum of people, it's, it's more so like a group of critics, is that...? Yeah, yeah. Critters.org is a is a group of critics oh, where you okay. submit your manuscript, and then uh, people, you know, you can select manuscripts. They can send to your email inbox some manuscripts weekly, and you can review them, and you build up kind of credits in the system, and then you, you know you spend your credits on getting other people to read your work again. So oh, okay. it's you know, quid pro quo. But uh, as I said, for various reasons, it just it, it was a a big investment of time yeah. that I wasn't has that I haven't yet been willing quite to, to engage in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one thing that uh, with the writers group side of things, uh, again, I don't have too much experience with it, but one thing that I do see online a lot is that um, writers uh, sometimes can be very assertive people, mm. and uh, sometimes they'll want to. Uh, even superimpose their own ideas into yours. Uh, I've heard that a lot in uh, on mm -hmm. online, where basically uh, they would give their feedback, but uh, say, "Oh, you should change this into this, and and have this character do this instead of what you have them doing." That sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's definitely uh, something to watch out for. There, you kind of have to have a thick skin uh, if you're gonna get into a writer group uh, situation mm. but definitely I mean, being a part of a writer group is uh, I think the, the biggest thing you need there is as you just said thick skin you, you need to know how to handle critique uh, and criticism from people that you have never even met mm. so it is yeah it's a special kind of situation <laughs> and you really need to be prepared for it yeah. But I mean, uh, it's definitely not all negative. We've kind of been a, a little bit negative on the writer group <laughs> side of things, but uh, mm -hmm. definitely there are some there are some pros uh, to that. And I think uh, you were just actually looking up uh, something there, Ethan, that uh, kind of had a few different ideas as well for pros for mm -hmm. writers groups, right? Yeah, I quickly took a look at uh, what some people are saying about it. As we both admitted freely, we don't have super much uh, experience with writers groups but uh, 
you know, in the interest of being thorough, of course, we can research it and we can tell you. <laughs> so some of the pros I've, I've noticed that people seem to mention again and again is the first thing that makes a lot of sense to me is that uh, these writers' group can teach you discipline. I mean, if, if you have to have a piece of writing ready every week for your group so that your peers can review it, after a while you're going to get into the habit of being regular with, with your work and being disciplined about getting it done on time, which is very good. I think that's a fantastic thing yeah, and for one, a writer to learn. And one thing mm -hmm. that I've just found like on my own, the more that I write, the more that I actually start to get better just even on my own. So even mm -hmm. just writing can help you out. Yeah, exactly. So anything that forces you to write more, and I mean, I know how it is to to say, oh, this is going to be a week of writing, and by the end of the week, you've got maybe a thousand words, and you feel <laughs> <laughs> like you really could have done a bit more. Uh, and writers' groups can help with that. Of course, there are also other things that can give you this exact uh, benefit, uh, but you know, this is something that writers' group could help with. Mm -hmm. Another thing is. Um, the fact that a writer's group is so large, it, you get a very diverse group of opinions about your work. And I'm going to refer to fiction and stories here because that's what we focus on a bit more. But you know, this goes for non-fiction as well, I would suppose. Um, of course, in any big group, there's going to be good advice as well as bad advice. But they, they say you tend to start noticing you. They, they call it, uh, you get inoculated against bad advice eventually, the more you do this. So eventually you'll start to learn how to ignore the bad advice, keep the good advice, and of course then a writer's group gives you a nice diverse platter of opinions and ideas that can help improve your story. So that's definitely, and this goes for any kind of beta read, whether it's through you know your friends and family or uh, any writer's group or you know, something like that. Yeah, it's always good uh, to get diversity. Like uh, I think we were talking about in one of our previous podcasts, uh, getting that female voice. Like you can uh, write female characters, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to actually uh, write them the best way. So mm -hmm. if you say get feedback from uh, female uh, in the writers' groups, uh, female readers even. Uh, that's mm -hmm. definitely going to probably help you out. They'll probably be able to uh, especially give you advice on that, and especially if you ask. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and then another thing I think will be um, very good for people who just do decide to join writers groups is that even though I said it's a big time investment, uh, because you have to give as much as you receive, pretty much. Actually, I think you give a bit more <laughs> um, what that that still helps you because in you you eventually you learn how to read a manuscript critically. You learn how to see mistakes and point out mistakes, and of course that's eventually going to translate to some extent to your own manuscripts as well. And you're going to find over time that your manuscripts get better, mm. uh, and you start to catch more of your own errors or avoid them altogether. Um, yeah, and that's uh, just in general, that's a, a great thing to have as a writer uh, to learn how to look at different things critically or even just look at things just a little bit differently. Uh, like even if you're watching, say, TV, like think about like uh, how, why they're positioning the shot there, or why they're changing mm. from this perspective to somebody else's per perspective and mm. uh, just kind of learning those tricks. And yeah, exactly. A uh, little off topic, a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. one thing that I kind of picked up on recently uh, in the show uh, Black Sails, it's a mm -hmm. pirate series, I noticed oh, that cool. uh, if sometimes, you know, a character ends with a question uh, that relates to another character, like, uh, say, they say, are you talking about them? And then leaves with that question, and then sometimes they'll cut and actually go to the person who they're talking about after that. So uh, mm. it'll kind of lead straight to the answer of that question. And mm. you can That's even, a trick. yeah. And you can even apply mm. that, uh, say with a chapter, you can end the chapter with uh, them mentioning somebody. And then you could even start the new chapter with that person 
and kind of continue it straight on sort of thing. So you can kind of learn different things just by looking at things critically like that. Yeah, exactly. As a, I mean, as in any trade in the world, the more time you spend handling the, the, the tools of your trade and the, the, you know, all the accompaniments to what you are devoting your life to, the better you will become at it, even if you're not creating all the time. So people who like to write screenplays, for them, watching movies will still increase their skills. And mm -hmm. the same way here, for people who want to make a living out of writing manuscript after manuscript, working with manuscripts even more by being in a writer's group will definitely have some benefit for you. Yeah, and uh, sometimes like, writers really uh, can give you feedback only that they can provide. Uh, definitely I've mm -hmm. been on the receiving end of that, like uh, writers have uh, been able to give me uh, not just, you know, what they say liked or didn't like, but, you know, kind of even why it might not work for certain uh, situations. Of course, you always want to take it with a grain of salt and uh, weigh it in your own mind first, but uh, sometimes those writers can give you uh, advice that is going to be a lot deeper than you would get anywhere else, say from friends mm -hmm. or family like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, as an example of that, um, I think in the beta group for my first story, uh, there was one colleague of mine that I included because she reads in that genre, and at some point in my story I had horses that were in the holds of the ship, and then interesting things happened to the ships, and there was a bit of an action scene, and later on they docked, and the horses came out, and they just kept on going on the horses, and she pointed out to me, no, no, there's no way, she actually, she actually owned horses. And she regularly goes on horse rides, and she said, no, there's no way those horses would have survived all that, you know, melee and all, all that excitement. They would have probably died from stress. <laughs> and I went and I looked it up, and I'm like, yeah, sure, that's true. I had to, in the end, I, I kind of had to, it was a sad moment, but I had to kill off the horses. <laughs> because there was just no way. Wow, that's and, um, really interesting. Yeah. I mean, getting that kind of domain-specific um feedback from people that's that's another thing that you, you kind of get from by targeting very diverse range of people and writers and things well yeah and even just uh on that end of things as well um unfortunately I can't, I can't remember it specifically there but i imagine that that would have even brought just a little bit more tension to the to the book as well like them losing their horses would have caused possibly quite a few problems or it, it could have been something that you could have uh, introduced uh, yeah. where they would... Help to increase the conflict and yeah. have another mini mission to accomplish. Yeah, it all helps. <laughs> There's an adage that I've heard sometimes from pro writers. They often say that, you know, if someone can tell you just a vague feeling that something is wrong with your story, but they don't really know what or how to fix it, then often it will actually pay to listen to that advice and, you know, figure out a solution by yourself. Of course, you can ask the person questions to try and tease out of them what exactly. Mm. Um, but they sometimes say that, you know, if someone can tell you what is wrong with your story and exactly step by step how to go about fixing it, that's uh, kind of the time to be wary. Because as you said before, there's often people that would, you know, project their own ideas into your story and might not completely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. So, I don't know, I think that's just a bit of a cautionary thing. Um, you know, if someone is too certain of how to fix it, just be careful. And uh, <laughs> But of course, I'm only talking about beta reading here, you know, people who are not professionals, uh, because I'd be kind of worried if my editor, you know, the person I pay to help me fix my manuscript's issues, uh, were to be, you know, unable to help me fix my story problem, that could kind of be an issue for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not always uh, just going to be doing copy editing. Uh, there's definitely uh, different types of editing that you can get there, uh, ones that kind of look at overall story. And mm -hmm. for sure, like uh, an editor, uh, hopefully, will have uh, a lot of experience already just kind of looking at uh, manuscripts and uh, having that critical eye because they do it mm -hmm. kind of for a living. 
uh, and definitely an editor can help quite a bit uh, to polish and tell you uh, kind of exactly uh, why uh, certain things should be changed. And uh, for sure, with on my end, uh, the first person who edited uh, my Blackbeard's Freedom story, um, she was able to point out quite a number of things, uh, like overused words that I uh, use like too frequently, and mm -hmm. uh, just a lot of other things kind of like that, that really helped uh, take my writing to the next level. Uh, and of course, you do have to go and apply those <laughs> suggestions yeah. and uh, keep them in mind for any future books there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it can be uh, some of the best advice that you can get from from an editor as long as uh, you're getting the right editor, of course. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. In general, I mean, to, just to sum up, I think whether you're using a writing group or an editor, I think, you know, don't take everything too seriously. Just have fun and be willing to learn, I suppose. Mm -hmm. that, that pretty much will help you get the most out of it. <laughs> yeah, and as we were talking in, in a previous podcast there, like wherever you can get feedback, uh, you can apply it at any time, really. And mm. it's just a matter of, you know, how you apply it and uh, whether or not, you know, you feel that it's uh, really necessary to have that change. Uh, but it's mm. definitely something that you want to take a look at um, and something that you can learn and grow from. Uh, make sure that, you know, you can get that thick skin and, and take that advice, not... Uh, <laughs> not uh, always have that chip on your shoulder as it were oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's definitely good to take advice and uh, help you grow of course so mm -hmm. and uh, of course uh, once again thank you for joining us here at second drafts podcast please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write edit and publish your way and let us know what you'd like to see from us in future podcasts and we'll see you next time cool. cheers guys do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.